<laughs> Talking about unemployment. <laughs> Talking about unemployment. What's, what's the rate? The, the, the March 2022 uh, unemployment figures are out. And that's what I've got in front of me here. They take about four months to be t- compiled, so they're always a snapshot that's just yeah, four months yeah. out. But look, um, <clears throat> the unemployment, as uh, the Prime Minister on the campaign trail got trapped by not knowing the figures, um, they are just below, f- across Australia, the um, unemployment figure is on average just below 4%. Mm. And I thought it's uh, interesting to compare where, where we are or where we were three or four months ago um, in La Trobe Valley compared with the 3.8% or percent, um, in the rest of Australia or the average. And the figures are, um, well, not very good for us. Uh, Churchill, we're look, looking at an average of 3.8. Yeah, yeah. Churchill is 5.3, right. 2% above. Moe Newborough is 9.5. Yeah, that's, wow. uh, that's yeah, about three times, two times the national yeah. average. Maul is 15.3, five times the national average. Trelgan, five, still 2% above the national average. And the place to be, uh, the place to be uh, living in and... Uh, uh, in, in employment in the valley is your law, uh, an area they've put together, your lawn north Glengarry, which is 3.5, which is a whisker below the state average. Yeah, how much how much vacant land is there? Yeah, well, <laughs> how many you know, people live there? Very few people. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's a, a, a but 15 percent in, in, in yeah, in yeah. There. Oh, that is, and we're miles above. And the this Australian is average. after the state government put up an, an organisation to transition jobs. Yes, the La Trobe Valley Authority, and you know, in all fairness to, to their team, um, this is not their whole, you know, it's not just no, no, La Trobe no, Valley no. Authority has, has failed us, but you know, they're, they're there to, to improve the situation, and it's obviously the situation hasn't improved. Now, more interestingly, we aspire to be the, the fourth of the big ones in Victoria, the fourth of the big regional centres, the Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, La Trobe Valley. And um, people say, oh, it's much harder in the country. You know, it's much harder in the country, you know, in the regions. There's not as many jobs, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to compare apples with apples. So here, here I go comparing apples with apples. Unemployment rate in Geelong is three well below the national average. Mm. 3.8, it's 3. So they're doing quite well. Ballarat, well, well below the national average. They're 3.5, 0.3% below the national average. Bendigo, 3.8, right on the national average. So the regional capitals of Victoria are doing exceptionally well. Geelong, 3. Ballarat, 3.5. Bendigo, 3.8. Latrobe City, combined average, 7.5. Double in fact, well over double the average of the Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong. So do you so reckon that is... Uh, we, have a, we have a structural yeah. problem. We really do. Do you think that's a consequence of what's happening with the coal? Or um, uh, is, it, is it something else? Look, I, I think it's largely to do with, with the coal. Um, you know, we lost Hazelwood. Hazelwood was a great swag of jobs. They haven't been replaced. So that's a hole in our employment uh, market. Also, they call it um, uh, the supply chain, which is doesn't really illustrate it well. But um, one engineering company said to me, "We do specialised machining work for all of the power stations and the mines." And so we had uh, we had four: we had Yulon, Hazelwood, and the two Loyangs. And what 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 he said was, when Hazelwood disappears, my twenty five percent of my work disappeared. I've still got 75% of my work. He said, so what I've had to do, you know, I think he had five or six employees, I've had to lay one off. So that's, you know, that's 25%, and their bigger firms would have laid off the same proportion. So they're, they're, as a result of Hazelwood, not only Hazelwood, but then there were the supply chain, as they called it, all the companies that serviced them, they shrunk back and laid people off. And when your lawn goes in uh, 28, that'll happen again, then the Loyang's three or four years later. And also the retail sector shrinks slightly because there's less money out there and and you find that they're not putting as many people on. Now, 
I personally can't understand how in the middle of a, a COVID, a massive COVID pandemic, our employment actually, un unemployment shrank, employment went up. But that's the fact across Australia. The statistics show it. It's also true across regional Victoria that unemployment has dropped dramatically. Now, let's, not let, let's be frank. Would, how, how worried is the state government about the state of, of uh, um, um, unemployment in Latrobe City? Because, I, I mean, in, in, in this region. Because um, I would have thought, I would have thought that by now, the candidate that has been endorsed to um, stand for, for more well yep. is, should be out there already um, talking about how we're going to turn this around. But there is silence, isn't it? Um, I've got an appointment with the ALP candidate this morning to yes. talk about what the belly needs. Uh, and I'll be waving this document in front of her. <coughs> right. So she okay. I didn't uh, know about that. Sorry. She's out doing the research, the preliminary research. You know, we, we where to, are the problems? You know, we need to hear something. Yeah. Look, I understand that's good politics, and uh, um, I'm sure she'll get the message. But um, bring yeah. her along with you uh, to the show next week. Yeah. Yeah. Why if not? You want to. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll now, do my, my best behaviour. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll have to have a discussion first. Um, but it's interesting. I look at the Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo situation. Each of them has got about three state seats centred on those, those yeah, major yeah, things. Yeah. So if you're a government, you're looking at what are the people in Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong? Yeah, there, there's nine or so, nine or ten seats there. They're important to us. What are they thinking? And you've got unemployment two of them below the state average one on uh, Australian average one on the Australian average so the the attitude to politicians is just look at that and go well oh, they're doing well the state's doing well we have one seat and it has changed politically um, I see Russell North has announced that he's retiring so um, that's really thrown it thrown the, it all back into the melting pot and it is possible for the for the state government to win that. Um, only possible. I'm not saying it's a state Labor seat or anything now. But the gains from La Trobe City's political representation are minimal compared with Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong. But you, you have mm. to understand that the state government keep keeps throwing money at Bendigo, Geelong, Ballarat. There's no doubt about that. Uh, lots of money. Mm. Now, here, all we get is promises. Well... <clears throat> the government, the Gov Hub, uh, the, the uh, area where they're consolidating all the government employment in the in the valley, it it has been built. Um, the first steps into the Gov Hub are a bit of a, what I call a zero uh, sum game, in that they'll be moving public servants out of existing buildings in the valley into there. But then they're going to bring new jobs in. They say. But look, I was cock a hoop when the Gov Hub was announced. I thought this is an initiative that's going to bring public servants out of Melbourne, all this kind of stuff. And then talking, I was at a meeting with the mayors. I was the mayor at the time of Ballarat and Bendigo and places like that. And I was saying, well, we've got this Gov Hub, you know, et cetera. And they said, oh, yes, we've got one. Each of them have got one. And the Bendigo Gov Hub and the Ballarat Gov Hub were twice the size of ours. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought, oh, God, get the message. We've got the need, you know. Um, I believe the uh, one of the new government initiatives, I think it's the Solar Power Authority. Mm. Um, I actually do know the uh, the CEO of that from a previous association. I ran into him a couple of months ago. And I said, uh, when is your team coming up here? He said, oh, not only is my team coming up, he said, I'm coming up and I'll be based here in the Valley. And he's a Melbourne guy. And... Uh, I see uh, one of the opposition members is raising a question in Parliament. What's happened? Because they haven't come yet. So the promised jobs haven't come yet. Now, before anybody rushes to the phone, it's probably related to COVID. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah you know, You're a politician. I've got to be fair to Stan. It may be that his people, you know... If it's not the computer, yeah. it's yeah. COVID now. <laughs> COVID, yeah. But... Um, yeah, it, it's it's we don't seem to be having the focus 
that we think we deserve because we are only one seat. Um, and we are out of step, not with the other three regional capitals. We're out of step with Australia. You know, which, and one little figure, I'll, before I bore you any more with figures, one last one, I'll, 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 and I can't get a handle on it. Why? But the participation rate of our, in our workforce is 57%. Now, I think that means that of the 100% people of a working age in the valley, 57.25 are actually working. Now, the rest of Australia, the average is 65. Mm. So there appears to be about 10% of our adult or working age population that doesn't involve themselves in the workforce. Now, I don't think they're showing in the unemployment statistics. And I suspect that that 10% are people who are on disability pensions, yes. things like that. And I wonder, <clears throat> with the, the period about six or eight years ago where rents down here were very cheap, where the welfare organisations have helped people to come here where the rents were cheaper, and we've got a, a skew in our workforce of people of eligible workforce age who perhaps aren't in the workforce, mm. and that's the, that. That may be one explanation. I've probably given the government an answer there, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I have I, I have an important question to make, and yes, to, 